attack settings. Do you normally ignore them and just go with the default setting? Or do you play around a bit hoping to stumble upon something really good? Well, the danger with that is that the wrong attack settings can actually ruin your mix. And I'm gonna demonstrate that later in the video. Attack settings could be confusing because it gives you the opposite result on a compressor than it does a gate or an ADSR on a synthesizer. So I'm gonna clear all that up and show you how to get a better mix just by changing the attack settings in each situation on vocals, drums, synths, and the overall mix. Coming up. Hi, Artie Sky here from the Skyland Music Group in New York City. Please take a second and just like, subscribe, share, get involved, and join our private Facebook group. Okay, let's get into it. This is all about attack, as in attack, decay, sustain, release, ADSR, which is what we call an envelope. The envelope determines how the dynamics of the sound are going to change through time and how it's going to be delivered. So the first thing we're going to look at is compression and the role the attack plays in a compressor. A compressor controls the dynamics of a sound by controlling the peaks, and that allows you to bring up the whole overall level of the sound, and that's going to reduce the dynamic range, the distance between the loudest and the lowest portions of a sound. So the attack will determine how fast the compressor kicks in after the sound passes the threshold. Okay, so first we're going to start out with the kick drum. I'm going to first play it with a very, very slow attack setting. So we're going to go all the way up to 200 milliseconds. So this is how much time passes before the compressor kicks in. So let's take a listen. Okay, now let's bring the attack all the way so it's down to zero milliseconds, meaning that as soon as it passes, that, that peak passes the threshold, well, well, on every hit, that compressor is going to kick in immediately. So let's take a listen now. Okay, you hear the difference? Let's go back to this. Okay, so what's happening over here is when the compressor kicks in, it's cutting off the initial attack. It's cutting off that transient. The transient is the first initial spike, the first couple of milliseconds of a sound when it first hits. So with drums, we want a slower attack because we want those spikes to come through. So whereas you might think a fast attack is gonna give you more attack, no, it doesn't. A faster attack on the compressor will activate the compressor more quickly, and by doing that, it will reduce the peaks and it will reduce what you determine as the attack of the sound. So that's why it's a little confusing. So a slower attack time is gonna allow more of that transient to come through, and we're gonna get more smack out of the drums because of that. Now we're gonna look at a hi-hat loop, which is a more obvious example because the transients on the hi-hat, you could really hear cutting through or you could hear them reduced. So this is with a very fast attack. Okay, and this is with a very slow attack. Listen to the way the hi-hat cuts through more. So you can hear you get more of that initial transient spike, which makes it sound brighter. And that's generally what's happening when you have a slower attack on a sound. You're allowing that transient to come through, which is usually the brightness portion of the sound. It's the sibilance. It's the first thing that we're hearing. So when you want it to sound a little bit brighter, very often it's a slower attack. Now I'm gonna show you a quick example using a vocal. And what's very interesting about this is that we're only gonna change the attack and we're gonna hear a wide range of tones from open and airy to tight and distorted to hitting that sweet spot right in between. Let's take a listen. Unlock your heart and let my heart in. 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 Now we're going to hear how attack affects a gate which is almost the exact opposite way that it affects the sound with the compressor. With the compressor, a slower attack gives us a little more of that transient, so we get a little more of the, 
the snap from the sound. Here it's going to be the exact opposite. With a fast attack, it's going to open up the gate sooner, allowing the sound, the initial transient, to pop through. And with a slower attack, it's going to glide in opening that gate, and it's going to be more like a violin bow. So let's take a listen to both, and I'm going to change the attack as we're listening. Here we go. So we can hear how the attack on a gate works almost in the exact opposite fashion of a compressor. So now we're going to look at an ADSR on a synthesizer and see how the attack affects that. Here we go. So as we can hear with the synthesizer, it's taking that initial sound that's already been created by the synthesizer, and then the envelope is determining how that sound is going to be delivered through time. So with the attack slower, it's going to allow the sound to gradually glide in, as opposed to having the attack all the way down, we'll get that initial spike. Now let's hear how the attack settings on a master bus compressor could really ruin your mix if you don't have the right settings. I'm going to use the SSL bus compressor, which I have in my master bus. Now this is an extreme example, so you can really hear the difference that adjusting the attack has on the overall mix. Now let's take a listen. So you can hear that with the slower attack, the mix sounds brighter, louder, with a wider dynamic range. And with the fast attack setting, the mix sounds darker and smaller, it's squashing all the dynamics, and it's killing all the hard work you put into your music production and your mix. So I'm only showing you this to illustrate the differences, not to say that one setting is better than the other for every situation. And of course, all the other settings like ratio, release, threshold, all come into play and affect each other, so you need to find the right balance. Now what do you do when the compressor you want to use doesn't have an attack time, like an LA-2A, an LA-3A, DBX-160? Well, generally speaking, compressors like that have a slower attack time, so you usually get more smack out of it. That's why I love to use the LA-3A for drums. And if you really want to learn how to get more smack out of your drums, you need to check out our video on extreme parallel compression. So please like, subscribe, share, join our Facebook group, check out the rest of the videos on our channel, and thank you so much for being here. Speak to you soon.